One of the things that we heard at last year's Black Hat from the keynote speaker, Dan Gear, was that there's so much attention being paid to protecting the core that people often forget the edge. Well, if you own the edge, you don't need the core. To show you exactly how vulnerable the edge is, we brought in Craig Young from Tripwire to show you how quickly he can own those edge devices. Craig, thank you very much for speaking with us. Now, there is, there is I think, an awareness that a lot of the Soho and, and home devices that we buy are not as secure as they should be, but is there, is there reason for people to be cautious about buying those devices? Yeah, certainly, um, especially when you're looking at things like routers or home security products, these are going to be filtering sensitive data or giving control to important functionality in your house. So you really do want to be aware of the possibility of risks, vulnerabilities in these products, and be aware of what might happen if they get exploited. At issue is the fact that a lot of people who might be buying these products are probably not IT people themselves. They, they, they see a product that will fulfill a need that they have. They need wireless. They need a router to, to split off their DSL modem. Maybe they need a slightly more advanced unit so that they can VPN back into the office. And so they're not as versed at the security features of any particular device. Has this been getting worse or better over, say, the last five years? I would say over the last five years worse that we're seeing more devices that are getting filled up with features that people don't necessarily need. And these features are coming in the form of like basement project quality open source software um, where the author doesn't necessarily have a sense of security or didn't have time to do things the right way. And it's just kind of being assumed by the IoT vendors that this code they're taking in is safe, and so they ship it without really doing their own review, if they even have the capabilities of doing review. Uh, we could talk about this issue until we're blue in the face, but I think it would be much better for our audience if you actually showed them what it would take to penetrate and exploit one of these devices. Could you show us some hands-on work? Sure. So uh, what I've got here, there is a common vulnerability within a number of different router brands, and this also affects other products that use similar types of firmware, where you have flaws that allow somebody to access files inappropriately on the device's web management system. Uh, the Ruckus wireless router system, for example, I was disclosing some vulnerabilities on this just today. Um, but in this case, I'd like to show you how you can go from just having a firmware image of the product to having a functional exploit and being able to, for example, uh, retrieve the admin password from a router without having any previous knowledge. All right, so what we've got here, uh, this is an extraction of the firmware from a TrendNet router that I analyzed last year for the So Hopelessly Broken competition. Um, what we've done is extracted the firmware and browsed into the root that serves the web files. And I'm going to actually use what files are there within the firmware to do an automated scanning process of the router and determine what files are exposed without authentication. So you can see we're looping across the files um, there and using curl to simply query them and check whether or not there's a 200 response from it. And if there is a 200 response, we just want to output the name of the file that was successfully requested. And you can see here index.html. Obviously, that's the base page that's going to come up. But we also see proc USB info.asp. So that immediately catches my interest. And so I'm going to query that page and see what the contents are from it. And we'll see that um, once we copy in this file name, we do get a response. And it's some system level diagnostic information, something that probably wasn't meant to be exposed to the user. Now, if we go to a random other file within the administration folder of the router, uh, we're going to see that we can't actually access this content directly. It's going to try and redirect us back to the login page. But if we go ahead and take the file that was allowed to us without authentication and append it into the query, we're all of a sudden able to get back response data from that syslog script. And if we take this one step further, we're able to find that there's a file on the router in the administration folder that actually contains the plain text password, the credentials for the administrator account. Um, so we see that management page there. And if we use that same authentication bypass technique to try and request that page, we'll find that the password comes back to us. So we have appended our proc USB info. 
And now if we just look for that string within the output that contains our password. Oop, wrong clipboard there. We'll go ahead and see that the password was LeetSpeak for the win. Now, in this particular instance, I noticed that uh, you, you're messing around with the firmware of uh, Linksys WRT54G. Uh, what, what could I do? So you already talked about the privilege escalation of being able to request files that are not protected, and yet they contain sensitive information. What else would I, as an attacker, be able to do against this particular unit? Sure. So this is actually a TrendNet router. That WRT54G that we all had, though, Half of the models from that shipped with an Intoto web server that required absolutely no authentication. All the requests to it could be C-surfed. And in that case, or in this case, an attacker could make a malicious web page that's going to relay commands to your router, whether or not you're logged into it, and replace the firmware on the router, or change your DNS settings directly. Once they've done that, they can start using your router for DDoS attacks. They can start trying to do man-in-the-middle attacks against you. There's lots of possibilities. since. You've got very little visibility. There's no real tools out there for saying, does my router have the proper firmware on it anymore? There are some tools for checking your DNS settings, but nobody uses them. OK, so we know that routers can be vulnerable. But one of the bits of research that you've done is also showing how the Internet of Things security devices can be exploited. Can you tell me a little bit about the process of doing that? Sure. Um, it's very similar. Generally, I will like to start with using a firmware image and performing static analysis on the contents within it, um, going through and spidering over the web interfaces, especially looking for pages that are ex exposed without authentication. And you know, a lot of these IoT devices, they just kind of assume if you're on the network with them, you're supposed to be using it and you're authenticated and they're not going to prompt you for any passwords. What this completely neglects is the possibility of C-surf attacks. And, of course, that's where you're going to go to a malicious web page that's going to actually find on your network the product and send an exploit payload to it. I mean, it always seems as if the exploits are getting more and more creative. As we shut down some of the more obvious avenues, they'll, they'll do that in order to enumerate your device and figure out exactly how they attack you. Okay, now, if you were to give our audience any practical advice for looking through their network inventory, be it a, a home office, a small office, wherever it might be, what are the, the bits of wisdom, the pearls that you can give to them to tell them to look for particular devices, particular firmwares that are better protected than others? Well, for one thing, I would say that devices that offer a web interface that you don't have to log into, that should be a big warning sign of a risk right there. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to check for uh, someone outside of the tech industry but looking at the request coming out of it and seeing if it has a C-Surf token in there, that's going to be very important. Um, but in general, these IoT devices, whenever possible, you want to put them onto an isolated network. So you don't want to be able to directly reach them from the computer that you're browsing the web with. And uh, what about uh, the advice that I've heard several times here at the show of avoiding a full stack solution for your network, where you have one vendor providing every single piece, or one super integrated appliance that now can open you up to many more vulnerabilities because what formerly had affected only the router can now affect the router, storage, security, etc. Yeah, um, this is certainly a risk of things being able to propagate across devices when they're sharing these kinds of proprietary protocols. Or for example, if you look at some of the products that share a common platform, like uh, not to pick on them, but Belkin's Wemo, uh, they all have a common firmware environment that they're using. And for example, the command injection unauthenticated that I found on the Belkin Wemo outlet also affected the Belkin Wemo based network cameras and probably every other Wemo based product. Convenient, unfortunately, also means pretty readily owned once you know how to handle one. Yes, this is true. Convenience and security are opposing, certainly. Now, if they wanted to find out more about your demonstrations, they wanted to find out more about Tripwire and more about your research on these Internet of Things devices, security devices, and home and Soho routers, where should they go? Well, the Tripwire State of Security blog has some resources, but um, more immediately, on Saturday at DEF CON, I'll be doing a workshop where I'm going to be teaching about um, brainwashing embedded systems. Later in the year at the Sector Conference in Toronto, I'll be doing a full day training with some of my colleagues there. Um, I would definitely encourage looking out for these events if you can attend.
Well, actually, I'll be at DEF CON, and uh, I'll bring some of my old trusty routers and see if we can bang up. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you for sharing your time and for your wisdom. Now, once again, Tripwire, Craig Young, if you're looking for security, he's the man.